Is there anything interesting here? I doubt it. Step aside. I have to... Make it quick. Thank you. 
Don't mess with me. Clemency? Never heard of it. Time to twirl. This is our chance. I'm gonna get that time back. Time to twirl. Let's make it quick. Step aside. I have no interest in stoking coffee. Let's go. What about this? Time to twirl! You must be honored to meet me. It's gonna hurt. What a headache. And your misery. Who's next? Clemency? Never heard of it. How am I gonna get that time back? with me step aside I have no interest in stoking conflict
So you are afraid of me. Your misery. Time to twirl. Step aside. I have no interest. Let's make it quick. Afraid of me. Time to twirl. The time is now. How am I going to get that time back? Don't mess with me.
Let's go. The life and death revealed in this sanctuary is but a vision. It's too late to repent. This is our chance. What are you looking at? Ever see a diamond this big? Clemency? Never heard of it. The time is now. Let's go. Uh, rules are made to be broken! Life and strength! Time to twirl! Let's make it quick.
step aside. I have no interest in stoking conflict. This sanctuary is but a vision. This is our chance. Batter up! You must be honored. Maybe you can keep it down? Time to twirl! Clemency? Never heard of it. Let's make it quick. What a headache. Step aside. I have a time now.
Step aside. I have no interest. Let's go. What about this? Who's next? Time to twirl! This is our chance. What are you looking at? Gonna get that time back. Anything interesting here? I doubt it. You're back! I've heard from Wildfire that you helped resolve that whole situation with Varog. Amazing. It must have been exhausting. Please have some food and get a good night's rest.
Over there. See that? That used to be the worst street in Rivet Town. And it's also where I grew up. My friends and I used to wander those streets, thinking about where to find our next meal. That is, until Chief Oleg got me out and took me to the orphanage. There, I learned to read and write from Natasha. At the age of 10, I started to patrol the mines with Oleg, occasionally getting into fights with the local thugs. Oh, that sounds nice. Nice? Are you being sarcastic with me? Oh, no, sorry. Life in the underworld is difficult. I shouldn't be speaking about it so lightly. Ugh. You're always so serious. It really gets on people's nerves sometimes, you know? Uh, right. Uh, what I meant was... Uh, I kind of envy you, Zila. For as long as I can remember, my days have been an endless cycle of studying, etiquette lessons, and training. Every day, all I hear is, Remember who you are, Bronya. This is against the Architect's admonishments, Bronya. Ladies shouldn't use such foul language, Bronya. <laughs> Some may envy this kind of life, but I have felt trapped. When every choice and every goal has already been made for you. <laughs> you probably can't imagine how that feels. No, I can't. But more importantly, what kind of foul language are you using? <sighs> In the name of the architects, I shall stick this spear into your nostril. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> oh, that's nothing. Looks like I'll have to teach you some underworld slang before you go back. <laughs> no. No, that won't be necessary. <laughs> It'll be better than poking people's nostrils, at least. <sighs> I never thought that I'd be here having a heart-to-heart -heart with the future guardian. As a kid, I didn't meet many people who lived in the overworld. I only heard stories from the grown-ups and figured you were all just a bunch of cold snobs. I've heard from some Silvermane veterans that before the orders were made to seal off the underworld from the overworld, there was no difference between the two places. Everybody ate the same food, chatted about the same topic, celebrated the same festivals. Even though times are different now, Things like the joys and sorrows of life, the ties between people. These precious things must certainly still connect us all. If there is a way to bridge the gap between the two worlds, we can definitely go back to the time when you and I were not divided. When we could stand side by side against the eternal freeze and the fragmentum. <laughs> I'm not like you. I don't have that many grand plans for the future, but if that's the future you want, I'm willing to build this bridge with you. Thank you, Zila. Your trust is very important to me. Speaking of which, um, what are you going to do next? What Svarog revealed must have made quite an impact, huh? Yes. I thought I was prepared for anything, but... As long as I am the Guardian's successor, those truths will come out sooner or later. But why does my mother hide it from me, and why does she want me to hunt down the outsiders who know about the nature of the Stellaron? It just... It doesn't make sense. I thought it over. There's only one thing I can do. Go ask her directly. Hold on, you're not really going, are you? A alone? You can't. This plan is... I've already thought it through, Zila. I am Madame Kokolia's daughter. That will never change. Be it my duties as her heir or as a Silvermane guard, I must face my problems head on. Even if... <sighs> Branya. This is for you, Zila. 
Please help me pass it on to the outsiders. If... If I am unable to see you again, they'll know what to do. Okay, I understand. You've made up your mind, and there's nothing I can say that will change it. But remember this. If you run into trouble, I will come to save you, no matter what. Then I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> so, did you come to this spot when you were a child? Of course. I just didn't appreciate how nice it was at the time. <sighs> Very nice. was a good sleep. <laughs> I should go meet up with March and Dana. Took you long enough, sleepyhead. We've been waiting all day. I've noticed that our sleep routines don't match up. You either keep getting up in the middle of the night or snoozing away until the day's almost out. Unacceptable. You gotta work on your teamwork! Hmm. Did you have a dream again last night? So that's why you slept for so long. Well then, let's go find Wildfire to discuss our next move and see if they have any new discoveries. Let's go! I can't wait to finally get back above ground! Look who's here. It's the Bane of Svarog, the big hero of the underworld. And the other big heroes, Dan Hung and March 7th. Were those lines rehearsed? Where's Natasha? Is she here? She has a bunch of other things to attend to. So I hope you don't mind talking to this <clears throat> old man instead. I speak on behalf of Natasha. By the way, sorry for keeping that whole thing about her being the actual leader of Wildfire a secret. <laughs> hmm. I'm glad you don't mind. Natasha is always cautious, but she has no ill intent, as you surely have noticed. She told me to make sure you return to the overworld safely. I gave it some thought, and I think the safest way is to ask this fellow for help. I brought you down. I can take you back up. Free of charge. Satisfaction guaranteed. There's no need to knock us out this time, right? Of course not. This time, we'll go back through the furnace core. That would be problematic and dangerous. Trust me, we should go through the furnace core. Ugh, enough chatter. Just be a good guide. Hold on. What about Branya? Why isn't she here? She already went back. As you know, she has some things to settle with the Supreme Guardian. She just ditched us and went back? How could you let her? Exactly. She has a lot of responsibilities. I don't completely understand, but I trust that she's trying to solve the problem. Oh, right. Branya told me to give you this. She left us a letter. Hmm. Could this be one of those open in case of emergency letters? I've never gotten one of those before. Should we wait until we run into something dangerous? Stop overthinking and just open it.
brother and sister Landau. I know the brother must refer to Jepard, but who could the sister be? Oh, Sir Ball! So she's Jepard's older sister. She gave it some good thought. But whatever's going on in that Supreme Guardian's head... Even Branya might have trouble understanding. Sampo, do you know the Landau siblings? Landau? Uh, yeah, we're all friends. I've mostly dealt with the younger brother in the past, but the sister? <laughs> She's much scarier. Uh, today's supposed to be a day of celebration, so let's not talk about it right now. We can set out at any time. Just come find me when you're ready. That thing's been cursed. You came at a good time. <laughs> there is something you can help me with. According to my patient records, there are a few that haven't come for their follow-up visits. It happens from time to time, but never as regularly as this. <sighs> I'm a bit concerned. Have you heard of the Complex Illness Mutual Aid Society? Generally speaking, mutual aid societies like these allow patients to share their experiences and support each other. It's a way of countering all the negative emotional effects of being ill. But there might be more to this society than that. I've got a few patients who have started refusing treatment since joining the society. It certainly makes you wonder. And the most suspicious part is that no matter how much I ask, no one's ever willing to tell me anything about it. And that's where you might be able to help. <laughs> it sounds dangerous, but what I want you to do is actually very simple. Investigate this so-called mutual aid society and find out what exactly they're up to. If I find out they're preventing me from doing my job, or if they're bringing harm to my patients, I won't just sit on the sidelines. Can I entrust you with this task? This little clinic has huge numbers of patients to deal with every day. If I didn't have you here to help me out, I wouldn't be able to focus on giving them quality care. Good luck. I'll be sure to thank you properly when you're back. you. 
I've seen you in the clinic. You run errands for Natasha, right? Your cover? What are you talking about? Let me guess. Natasha wants you to persuade me to go back for a follow-up visit, right? What's the use? I'm terminal. Life will be over before I know it. Of course not. I read it in a book. Every book I read has descriptions that match my symptoms exactly. I can diagnose myself with a dozen incurable diseases before I get halfway through. For people in my situation, a follow-up visit is just a waste of time and money. Not to mention medicine. What else is there to say? Natasha was seeing me free of charge. She said I could keep a tab running for as long as I liked, then pay it back when I had the opportunity. I guess I'm too proud. You think I need you to tell me? Don't try and persuade me. I've already thought this through. <sighs> Dr. Vash never charged me anything either. Natasha's great, but Vash was always my number one. Natasha's brother. They both used to practice medicine back in Rivettown. I heard he was a top student from the Overworld Medical Academy. Bellabog's main hospital wanted him. I've no idea what convinced him to set up down here. A kind heart, maybe. What do you mean? Dr. Vash was a people's doctor. He handed out free medicine. He even followed up with detailed questions on how he felt. The underworld is always short of medical resources. They say that Dr. Vash made all his own medicine himself. You think I don't want to? I heard that he passed away. Uh, I should keep my voice down. Don't go telling anyone else about this next bit. I heard that Natasha had something to do with Dr. Vash's death. They say she was jealous that her brother had stolen her patience, so she... It's just something people were saying. I don't think Dr. Natasha could do something like that. Forget I said anything. Since Dr. Natasha sent you over specially, I'll do her a favor. I'll go to the clinic for my follow-up a little later. Bye for now. Avoiding a follow-up visit due to money issues. I should find another patient to talk to. Where have you been? What was that? Oh, you'll have to be louder. My ears aren't what they used to be. Everything's muffled. Is that what you're asking about? Natasha's a, a, a wonderful girl. She always gives me a thorough checkup. But at this age, it's rather a lot to bear, even if they could cure me. I'm sure I wouldn't be around for long. I don't want to waste anyone's time. Not for youngsters like yourself. <laughs> when you get to my time of life, good health is a bit of a luxury, I'm afraid. My husband had the same illness as me, but he never touched the medicine. <laughs> he wanted to make sure I had enough. Where have you been? Then, one day, he said he needed to take care of some things at the mine. He never came back. He was forever saying he wanted to go before I did. Ah, <laughs> oh, selfish old fool. I miss him. Now that he's gone, who cares how long I stick around?
You're not wrong, I suppose. That girl certainly spares me no effort. But I always feel like I'm a burden to her. Okay, you win. It's off for another follow-up visit with Dr. Natasha, I suppose. Hmm? Did you want to say something else? My ears are terrible. Where have you been? Virtual who? I heard you. Do you have to shout? No, I've never heard of any mutual aid society. Avoiding a follow-up visit because of her husband. I should find another patient to talk to. Why haven't I gone for my follow-up visit? Are you a patient too, or did Dr. Natasha send you over? Who else would care about people like me? I don't need Dr. Natasha's help now. Tell her to save her worries and medicine for other people. A dispute? No, no. She's the only kind-hearted doctor in the underworld. I just don't really approve of her methods, that's all. Too idealistic and no real efficacy. She tries to save everyone, which means she can't save anyone. In the end, it's the patients who suffer, and she just tires herself out. Miners like me don't have time for lengthy treatments. If I can't take something and get right back to work, I may as well lie down and wait for death to come knocking. Did you, uh, know Dr. Vash? His wonder medicine is cheap, and the results are immediate. You just need to uh, be willing to, uh, take a little risk. Dr. Vash's medicine is different. Lots of people make a full recovery after taking it, but some get worse, and the unlucky ones check out early. Even knowing the risk, most people fight tooth and nail to get hold of the medicine. You know why. <laughs> You're smarter than you look. When life forces you to the edge, you'll throw yourself at any opportunity, even if it means risking it all. People like us, a slow and torturous treatment is the same as a death sentence. If it's between that and a quick result, we'll take the ladder. <clears throat> Forget it. Why am I telling you all this? Dr. Vash is dead anyway. <laughs> what? Now you're interested in the wonder medicine? Listen up. The Complex Illness Mutual Aid Society is still selling that medicine. I can tell you where they trade, but there's a rule. You must not tell any of this to Dr. Natasha, you hear? If you break the rule, you'll face the consequences. Here, take this, it's the address. A final warning, do not reveal this information to Natasha. I know where to find the wonder medicine. What should I do next? That patient didn't want me to tell Natasha about this. Should I listen to him? So the Mutual Aid Society found my... found Bash's research results, and now they're selling this so-called wonder medicine to patients? 
Any organization doing something like this is interested in more than just mutual aid. I'm not surprised. They'll know that I'm completely against them using this wonder medicine. What Vash left behind is nothing more than reagents and experimental byproducts. The word medicine doesn't apply here. I warned the patients countless times, but seems like they had their heads in the sand all along. No wonder they kept the Mutual Aid Society a secret from me. Thank you. Those patients weren't exactly singing my praises. Thank you for having faith in me. If you're curious about Vash's wonder medicine, you should ask some of the patients in the clinic. See what they have to say about the effects. Some people say that Dr. Vash was a saint who came from the overworld to help those in need. Eh, I don't buy it. People's doctor, that's just what people who've bought into the myth like to say. Vash used to distribute free medicine all the time, but um, he, he couldn't have cared less about the people taking the medicine. The hard truth is that we were just his test subjects. It didn't matter if the medicine worked or not. What mattered was having a constant stream of willing lab rats. Of course, I can't control what anyone else thinks. That's just how I see it. The medicine Bash left behind? <sighs> that stuff... Can you even call it medicine? I know Dr. Natasha's here, but I have to tell it like it is. Bash had zero medical ethics. He didn't deserve the title doctor. He may have had the capability, but he didn't use it to help anyone. Whenever I went to see him, he never even asked about my illness. He just prescribed me his so-called wonder medicine. If it were you, would you have taken that medicine? <sighs> I still haven't worked out how to convey it to you. The issues surrounding Vash. My relationship with him. The things he's done in the underworld. It's a long story. I'm guessing you've heard a lot of different opinions on Vash. <laughs> what do you make of him? I want you to go and visit another patient, a victim of the Wonder Medicine. I want you to see the real consequences of abusing that medicine. Once you've understood her situation, come back and tell me what you think. After that, I want to ask for your help again. Poor lady in peace. Let me explain. That poor, poor lady 
Both her husband and child became ill and passed away. Oh, well, not terribly serious, but they needed to get treatment every now and then, which did impact their livelihood. In order to try and rid themselves of the ailment once and for all, they bought some kind of wonder medicine. Who would have thought their condition would deteriorate so rapidly after they began using it? The two began to suffer terribly, such that death then became a blessing. It wasn't long before they departed this world, one after the other. From that moment on, oh, she became as you see her now. If Dr. Natasha hadn't taken her under her wing, well, it doesn't bear thinking about. And yet, what more could have been done? They were warned about the medicine. They were told about the risks. But they chose to roll the dice. Oh. Talking about it tires me out. At least my husband and I are able to help her where we can. I just hope that one day she can lead a normal life again. Did you speak to her? By the look on your face, I'm assuming you've come to understand the wonder medicine all too well. <laughs> yeah. Be it Vash or the Mutual Aid Society, forces like that can take full advantage of the... the typical underworld state of mind. Let me tell you a story. There was once a brilliant overworld doctor with unmatched pharmaceutical skill. The doctor was set on developing a medicine that would steal the human body against the cold. He named his research project Blizzard Immunity. But his research met with obstruction time and time again, the biggest factor being a lack of test subjects. Tampering with the human immune system carries huge risk, and nobody in the overworld was willing to submit themselves to such experiments. As such, the doctor got in touch with his sister in the underworld, claiming that he wanted to support the medical effort below ground. Naturally, his sister was overjoyed. After all, as far as medicine was concerned, her brother had always been the standard she'd strive to attain. She brought her brother underground and entrusted him with her clinic and laboratory. I think you know what comes next. Issuing free medicine to the needy was just Vash's way of conducting experiments on his test subjects. On some level, his reagents were able to alleviate the patient's suffering, but nothing more. They would forget their pain for a while and neglect their regular treatment plans. <laughs> the result? Patients with mild illness would attribute their recovery to the so-called wonder medicine, while patients with serious illness would quickly deteriorate and sometimes die. I cannot accept that their fate was simply the result of misfortune or risk. No true doctor would accept that. That's why I want you to help me recover all the wonder medicine. Are you willing to take on this assignment? Thank you. This will be hard for the people that have come to rely on the wonder medicine. But it's up to us to remove this false hope. You mustn't hesitate. Recover every last reagent that Vash left behind. I'll take responsibility for the consequences. Don't worry about that. Go. I'll be waiting for the good news.
Stop right there. No one's allowed up ahead. Ho oh, ho! Playing the hero, are we? Is this a stick-up? Wait a minute, you're that clinic woman's lackey, aren't you? Did you think the Mutual Aid Society didn't have its own intel? She's after our medicine and sent you here to smash the place, right? Men, look lively and send this idiot packing already! Don't mess with me! Clemency? Never heard of it. Time to twirl! Let's go. What about this? What are you looking at? Uh. What a headache. Time to twirl! Gonna get that time back? Well, look who we have here. Your reputation precedes you, outsider. I didn't take you for a bandit and a thief. You listen here. I'm the president of the Complex Illness Mutual Aid Society. The medicine we hold here is lifeblood for many of our members. Are you sure you want to deprive them of that? Those poor patients. Along comes a life-saving wonder medicine only to be snatched away by a shameless bandit like you. The underworld is full of sickness. What would happen if we left it all to that clinic to treat? My Mutual Aid Society has relieved that doctor of patients at the end of the road. Shouldn't she be thanking me? Hmm. Seems like you are quite bent on dismantling our operations, aren't you? Fine, seeing as you came all this way, it'd be rude not to give you the opportunity. Men, seize the medicine thief! mess with me I'll free you from your chains disappear among the sea of butterflies illusions of the past Time to twirl. let me end your misery your misery. Time to twirl! Let's make it quick. Time to twirl! So you are afraid of me.
bastard! What did we ever do to you? Why are you taking away our moneymaker? You admit it, then. You're not in this to save lives, you're in it to get rich. What are you doing here? Oh, as if we didn't have enough trouble already. Selling fake medicine with false kindness. You should have expected trouble to find you sooner or later. I have a responsibility to protect the well-being of my patients. Or to put it another way, I must eradicate any and all threats to them. You... 
Well, you can't save everyone. The underworld is teeming with sickness. How could you possibly pull it off? You're right. I can't save everyone alone. But if I must, I would sacrifice food and sleep to treat them. The debt that Vash owes to the underworld rests with me. All I can do is help everyone to the best of my ability. To the very end. Ugh. Ugh, so stubborn. In that sense, you're no different from your crazy brother. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. Your actions today have saved many Underworld families. I'll find a way to dispose of Vash's leftover reagents. Next time the Mutual Aid Society wants to whip up a quack cure, they'll be out of luck. Let's go back to town. I still owe those patients an explanation. The mining team is... Is there anything interesting here? I doubt it. Uh-oh. It looks like the patients have surrounded Natasha. Let's hear what they're saying. What are you saying, Doctor? The wonder medicine is out of supply? Correct. That medicine is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Wildfire has cut off the supply chain. Your ailments need rational, scientific treatment. Relying on pseudo-medicines will only worsen your condition. <laughs> rational and scientific, huh? The way I see it, you're just jealous you lost your patience. Oh, how dare you speak to Dr. Natasha like that? Where are your manners? Ma'am, please, think for a moment. How can you still be siding with her? That wonder medicine was working fine for us, and now it's gone because she wants it to be? How can she? I understand your anger, but as your doctor, I ask you to trust my judgment. I will find a way to access more medical resources and help you through your struggles. If I must, I'll get help from the surface. The surface? <laughs> I almost forgot that you were an overworld big shot. Have some respect for Dr. Natasha. If it's respect she wants, she better find a replacement for the wonder medicine fast. If not, I'll tell everyone about how she set up Dr. Vash. I'm out of here.
Oh, you're here. I apologize. That must have made for uncomfortable viewing. Mm, I'm okay. If I were in his shoes, I may well have had the same reaction. Now I need to focus on treating the patients and dispelling their doubts. Let's leave it for now. I'll feel a lot better once I've gotten rid of this mess that Vash left us. Now's as good a time as any to tell you Vash's whole story. If there's anything you want to know, don't hesitate to ask. No, but I used to think we were so close that we may as well have been. <laughs> I, uh, actually grew up in the orphanage. It wasn't until I was adopted by an overworld family that life changed for me. My adoptive mother always saw me as her own flesh and blood, <laughs> and Vash loved me like a sister. That is, while we were still young. <laughs> My adoptive parents belonged to a prominent medical family. As kids, we were exposed to all kinds of medical texts. When we were older, both of us got straight into Bellabog's medical school. We were on a path into the medical profession. He was gentle and introverted. But when it came to work, he could be absurdly obsessive, like a completely different person. Whenever I made a mistake in an experiment, he'd bite my head off. And then a while later, he'd apologize and comfort me. He was... conflicted in that way. I didn't know he had leftover reagents in Rivet Town. I was shocked when you told me. If you fail to make a clean break with the past, the past creeps up on you. <sighs> That's a long story. Ever since he was little, Vash had always wanted to develop a medicine called blizzard immunity. He saw the human body's vulnerability to cold as a disease and wanted to cure it so that humanity could survive the eternal freeze. If he succeeded, people would be able to leave Bellabog and rebuild their homes in the Snow Plains. To be honest, I never understood how he'd achieve that blizzard immunity. But I do admire that vision and perseverance. I always chose to believe him, ever since I was a kid. I knew his research in the overworld wasn't going well. I used to write to him and ask him to come down and stay with the kids in the orphanage for a while. I thought it might help take his mind off his research. But I was too young to know what long-term frustration could do to a person. It changed him in a terrible way. During his stay in the Underworld, he met patients affected by fragmentum corrosion with mild symptoms. Compared with non-patients, their bodies reacted differently to hot and cold. And that fascinated Vash. He began to simulate mild fragmentum corrosion, thinking that it could lead to breakthroughs in developing blizzard immunity. Those reagents of his aren't cure-alls for critical illness. That doesn't exist. Fash made the reagents to mitigate the suffering of his patients in the short term. A convenient way for him to observe changes in his test subjects. But behind my back, he had been doling out the reagents to residents who were kept in the dark. When it finally struck me that something was wrong, his terrible research had already turned him into... into a madman. Indeed. And it all happened under my nose. How ridiculous. My judgment was clouded by trust in a loved one. 
When his experiments were exposed, I spent a long time with Oleg discussing how to handle the aftermath. This was shortly before the Underworld was sealed off. There were hardly any Silvermane guards remaining. We spent ages trying to find a way to handle Vash. In the end, Oleg suggested that we banish him and permanently deny him access to the Underworld. Had his victims found out the truth, Vash would have been torn to pieces by furious Underworlders. I was... young and weak at the time. Oleg must have worried about how I'd react to such a scenario, or he wouldn't have suggested banishment. <sighs> Looking back, it wasn't. He deserved much worse. Oleg and I took Vash to the Overworld. He made his final request to us. To take him outside the city to the snow plains he'd always wanted to conquer. His figure gradually disappeared into the snow curtain. I've been telling myself that Vash is dead ever since. Forgive me. I'm not good at telling stories. Vash was a terrible brother and a worse doctor. That's all you need to know. Let's call it a day. Thank you for cleaning up the mess my brother left behind. Here, for your trouble. difficult since moving to Boulder Town. He gets home really late every day. I don't want to use his hard-earned money to buy a gift. <laughs> hey, are you patronizing me? Actually, I still have some valuable treasure of my own in Rivet Town. <laughs> It's a shame I left it there. If I go bring it back and sell it for a decent price, I can buy a gift for Daddy without begging anyone for money. I know that Rivet Town is super dangerous right now. That's why I'd like to enlist you as my bodyguard. That way, even if the old witch finds out later, I won't be the only one getting a scolding. <laughs> Let's meet in Rivet Town. I'll be waiting for you in a safe spot. You're not allowed to not come. So long. Hook's been waiting here for ages. Well, 
It wasn't actually that long. As long as you're here now, it's fine. I got some good news and some bad news. Which do you want to hear first? I told the rest of the moles about the plan, and Julian asked me to get some treasure for him. If we don't help him, he'll tell the old witch where we've gone. The good news is that he's willing to contribute to our adventure. Look, he gave me this gardening shovel. Well, Julian has been a huge help to me. Consider this returning the favor. Well, the treasure won't grow legs and find us, will it? Come on, let's go. adoptive parents used to own a business in this area when we were ah we found julian's treasure <laughs> no not the key these glass marbles oh, look at all the different colors but it wasn't easy collecting all these what <laughs> you don't know <gasps> have you never played marbles before oh, by the way what is this key open Oh, maybe Julian knows. What's that look on your face? Oh, I get it. You don't think this jar of glass marbles is worth anything, right? Let me tell you something. This jar of marbles means a lot to the moles. Julian used it to help the moles overcome a super huge crisis for which he was promoted to second in command. It wasn't that, but his accomplishments are nothing to be scoffed at. In the past, the kids in town were arch rivals to us at the orphanage. Those kids used to bully us, relying on the pocket money that their parents gave them. One time, they sent us a formal declaration of war, challenging the moles to a marbles competition. We were all well aware that we didn't stand a chance. We at the orphanage only had some old glass marbles we scavenged from the side of the road. Which are no match for those rich kids' marbles. Nonetheless, Julian bravely accepted the challenge. And triumphantly returned with a pile of colorful glass marbles he won. Oh, it was incredible. Yep. So, now you know why he wanted us to find this treasure. All right, enough chit-chat. Next, we need to find my treasure. Time to get to work. Hook's treasure is hidden below the orphanage near the mine's entrance. Prince. This doesn't feel like the rivet town I remember. Do you think the orphanage is like this now, too? to repent. Time to twirl! This is our chance. Time to twirl! Don't mess with me! Let's make it quick. What about this? Time to twirl! You must be honored to meet me. 
What a headache. Good cut. Time to twirl. Step aside. I so How am I going to get that time back? is nothing like it was before I left. Boxes and mine carts are all over the street. Oh, what a mess. Oh, did someone move my treasure too? I used to keep it in the mining team's junk pile. Behind the corner, there were heaps of geomero and boxes. Oh, hopefully it hasn't been taken. Well, that's all I can recall. But don't worry, I'll look with you. <laughs> I may even find it before you. Don't mess with me. Too late to repent. This is our chance. Oh, poor you. It'll take more than that. Life and death revealed in this sanctuary is but a vision. Time to twirl. It's too late to repent. What a headache! I'll free you from your chains. Disappear among the sea of butterflies. Illusions of the past. Let me end your misery. Don't mess with me. Before I left, 
boxes and mine carts are all over the street. Oh, what a mess. Oh, did someone move my treasure too? I used to keep it in the mining team's junk pile. Behind the corner, there were heaps of geomero and boxes. Oh, hopefully it hasn't been taken. Ugh, why are you so lazy? Oh, I'm so unlucky. given to me by a guy from daddy's mining team as a birthday present. <laughs> I'm going to turn it on. Whoosh! Huh? Oh. Oh, just, just don't talk to me right now. I need to calm down. I said don't talk to me right now. I need time to think. Remember? Um, I wonder, how much do you think Julian's glass marbles would sell for? <laughs> what? Did you think I was serious? I wasn't actually planning on selling these marbles. <laughs> Besides, they aren't even worth much. Well, that might work. But it'll be pretty expensive to fix, right? Not possible. Daddy said that guy went missing one day and he never saw him again. Maybe he went someplace far away. Hm. I have no idea when he'll come back, so that definitely won't work. Oh, wait a second! I hid another treasure at the orphanage! I don't want to sell it, but if I want to buy Daddy a gift, I don't have any other choice. Honorary member, please, please help me look for it. Just one more time. Ah, yay, let's go. to deal with them first. So you are afraid of me. Time to twirl! Let me end your misery. Time to twirl! Clemency? No. Time to twirl! Time to twirl! What a headache. Don't mess with 
with me. It's too late to repent. where I stashed the treasure. It's a reward from the old witch. <laughs> You'll know what it is after I dig it up. Go down the stairs on the left, then walk 10 paces forward. Turn right, walk another 15 paces, spin around 10 times, then keep walking forward. Hmm. Oh no, I'm doomed. Oh, what kind of lame treasure map would it be if it only had one or two steps? Without the second half of my notes, how will I ever find the treasure? Aww. Oh, really? Quick, let me see. <sighs> Let's use the home use object finder to help hook search. object you want to search for. Oh, wow. <laughs> this little... What's this? Oh, looks like something is written on it. For Julian, 50 years in the future. Whatever. Since we've already dug it up, let's open it. I guess you're right. We should wait 50 years before opening it. Let's take it back to Julian along with the glass marbles. Here it is! My teddy bear! The old witch gave it to me as a gift. Yes! He's called Junjun. Whoa, Junjun. How did you get covered in dirt? And why do you have so many loose threads? If we don't get you cleaned up, no one will buy you. The old witch said that Junjun isn't just any old teddy bear. He'll be worth a lot of money once he's cleaned up. <sighs> There's no other way. I haven't learned to sew yet. I'll have to ask the old witch for help. If she finds out I went somewhere I shouldn't have gone, uh, Hook will get lectured all over again. What? So what if the old witch yells at me? Hook still has to prepare the gift for Daddy. We found the treasure! Let's split! The monsters here give Hook goosebumps. Ooh, too scary. I'm warning you. Don't you dare tell the old witch about Hook's plan to sell the treasure. It's getting late. Where to now? Hook? What are you... <clears throat> Natasha? Um, Junjun's in bad shape. Can you help me fix him? I remember giving you Junjun. I haven't seen this fella in years. Where did you find him? The... The wind brought him back to me. Be honest with me, Hook. <sighs> Big 
brother helped me find him in the Rivet Town Orphanage. You had him take you to the Fragmentum just for this teddy bear? Hook, how many times have I told you? Natasha, please. Please help me fix June June. I'll clean the clinic for you for a whole month. <sighs> you say that every time, and then... <laughs> Great! See you soon! Uh, big brother, I'll leave June June with you. What am I going to do with that girl? You shouldn't indulge her, outsider. Uh-uh. I know it's difficult to tell Hook no, but sometimes it just has to be done. <sighs> June June. So she gave her bear a name, huh? I've lost count of all the tolls I've made. To be honest, I wasn't expecting her to like this one so much. It was an award I used to give the kids in Rivet Town for good behavior. Can you imagine what an orphanage is like with so many difficult children? I, mean, I had to come up with a solution to get them to behave. Hook pretended to be well behaved for a month in order to get June June. She ate on time, slept on time, even stopped fighting with the other kids. Of course, as soon as she got her award, she went straight back to her old self. <laughs> Hook has an uncanny ability to rally people to her cause, both adults and children. It's a skill, all right, and forcing her to be well-behaved puts a lid on it. Well, this teddy bear has sure been through the wars. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll help Hook repair June June, but I'll need to find some stuffing. W wait, look at the eyes. They must be... Erebus? Huh. Strange, I didn't notice when I sewed them on. I'm no appraiser, but these two gems look to be high quality. Well, our war-torn bear here just became a priceless doll. Not bad, Jun Jun. So strange. It seems like Asta and Arlen are in trouble. 